We will now have our closing remarks um, by our candidates, and it will go in reverse order with Mr. Jones, Mr. Gow, Ms. Davila, Ms. Bell, and Mr. Akarujaman. The closing remarks, and you have five minutes. Beginning with Mr. Bernard Jones. Did something? We wanted to add. Oh, we got over there one time. Yeah, you ask. sit there. One time from two oh, okay. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. Ready? Four years ago, I decided to run for office and was unlucky. But during that time, I studied government. I put myself into the community, raising money, bringing awareness to organizations and things like that. That is what you need, someone that is willing and able to study and work hard for the people of Patterson. I then decided to run again through a year and a half later for a special election of the first ward and was unlucky again. But during that run, I sat at this, in this very room and addressed an issue on how to bring revenue into the city. I said we should go after the surrounding towns like Heldon and Wayne that was tapped into the Patterson sewer system. A month later, council put in legislation to go after surrounding towns where we went from $6 million to $10 million. And I feel like I played a part in that. If given that opportunity, I will think, I will be a thinker for the citizens of this city. I will study the budget. I will sl um, just really master the overall budget, budget. Let me calm down. This is what we need to inform the people. The form of government in which the city of Patterson runs by is the Faulkner Act. That form of government is where the council is Congress and the president is the mayor. The council has the right to call the mayor to the floor and question and challenge the budget at all times. They can vote to remove a line item and say we're not going to pass this budget, come back with a better budget. Those are things that the council can do. We have to educate the people so that the people can hold the council as well as the administration accountable. Until that is done, we will continue to have a billion dollars walk into this city and walk out this city without the citizens of this city benefiting from that billion dollars. There is so many programs and opportunities for our children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren to grow from, but it's about electing the right individual to come into the city and make sure those things are available for our citizens. On May the 8th, I'm asking you, I'm begging you, to go into that poll and vote for true government, real government, government that is going to be able to bow down and listen to the citizens and put the people and the citizens before themselves. So that is what I'm asking you to do. I'm asking you to go do your homework, research on me, and realize this is my time, four years of working hard to do right by the people of Patterson. And that is all I'm expecting, and that's all I'm asking for you, is to do right by yourself and to do right by me, because I will always do right by the city. Thank you, Mr. Jones. We will now have Mr. Gow closing remarks. Thank you, Council President. Madam Clerk and staff, I want to thank you again. Uh, a little interesting tonight, huh? No questions. and. I think it's a courtesy thing, and I think it's only fair uh, to everybody. But I just want to recap on some things. Uh, during my time, when I first ran in 2000, when I ran in 2000, we didn't have the Department of Motor Vehicles. They were gone. Nobody even talked about bringing them back. But in 2000, in my literature, which I can prove if you look at my literature, I talked about bringing them back. Two years later, Senator Gigenti's office jumped on it, the movement was there, and we brought it back. Nobody even talked about the Great Falls being a national park. I talked about making it a national park. It's in my literature from 2000. Today, we have a national park, Great Falls National Park. There are other things that I've done. I spent a lot of time my heart and soul, I wish we could have did it in a shorter period of time, to restore Pennington Park.
but that's only one park out of many parks in the city of Patterson. But that one specifically was in the second ward. But it took 14 years, even two years after I left. Now I hear the most disturbing thing that we're leasing it to Bergen County. I can't believe for the life of me that we would do something so stupid. But that decision was made here. I don't think it's been final. I think the votes were there. But I think what we need to do is revisit this and rescind it. That park is a city park. It's for city residents. There was a time when one of the most famous soccer league uh, teams from Argentina came to Patterson, New Jersey. And they wanted to refurbish the park, make it a soccer center, something on a national level. But they were denied that. But yet now we're going to re uh, we're going to lease it to Bergen County. So this I find a little disturbing. All the parks in the city of Patterson have been neglected. Parks are a way of life. Large cities emphasize the benefit of parks. People like to go to parks. You can't go to a Patterson park. You might go there during the daytime, spend a little hour, but for the most part of the day, the parks are in very bad shape. The taxes must be stabilized. The new administration has to make some tough decisions. This council is going to have to make tough decisions. We have to make the cuts. There's no way around it. Enough is enough. Everybody's talking about it, but nobody's doing it. How much further are we going to go? We can't borrow any more money. We're down to 300 something million dollars. Now we can only borrow $80 million if we needed to. When I said, let's spend $10 million to refurbish the streets back in 2004, they told me, $10 million, are you crazy? So now in 2018, you bond 43 plus million dollars? And you still haven't gotten a fraction of the roads paved. So here we are 18 years later, two years after we bonded $43 million, and do you see any roads being paved as we speak? The, words are, the roads are getting worse and worse. So these are just a few of the things. There are many challenges that are going to face the new administration and a new council. And everybody better be ready for it because this is the time to move Patterson forward. We have to do this once and for all. Why is it that Patterson continues to pay health care benefits for police, fire, DPW, and other workers after they retire? Okay, right now they're our employees, we take care of them. But when they retire, enough is enough, ladies and gentlemen. These are big choices, you have to do this. I'm not saying anybody who's in the system now, we take anything away from them, but let's start now. When you retire, new employees that come on now, when they retire, they have to carry their own, like other municipalities do. How are we gonna sustain ourselves? $300 million is what we're facing. State-owned? Literally, by the state, we're dependent on them. When is that going to end? You know, the logic here is a little backwards. I've never seen the things that I've seen happening here. They would never happen anywhere else. Everybody talked about the, mayor, the mayoral candidate not living in the city of Patterson. But interestingly, a judge ruled in his favor, and he made him a certified candidate. So you can't dispute that anymore. But this is my point. Your business administrator doesn't live here. She's a state senator. Your city attorney who doesn't live here is the mayor of Hilden. Your DPW director doesn't live here. Your police chief doesn't live here. Your fire chief doesn't live here. Should I keep going? How many other employees do not live here? So why would they have the same concern and same value of living in the city? Public safety is a big issue. Taxes are a big issue. This is our time to move the city forward. I will conclude by saying I'm Aslan Gao Sr. I bring the most experience to the table. I have a good understanding of how city government works, and I'm 10 beyond the ballot. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Gal. We will now have closing remarks by Ms. Marissa Davila. Ms. Davila. I began by saying I am your councilwoman at large, Marissa Davila. And I'm going to end by saying I am your councilwoman. I am that councilwoman who has sat these four years here and has made many tough decisions. When people have tried to indicate that I am that individual 
who is just pro the administration. No, I've been that person and that advocate to make sure that things get done. And yes, it would be nice if there was a, a group of people who worked with the administration. Yes, we must hold them accountable. Yes, we must make sure that the things that they're putting before us, we're scrutinizing. But I continue to say I am that councilwoman who has made those tough decisions. I'm that councilwoman who came when her mother passed away to the city council to vote to, to, vote to adopt the budget. I'm that councilwoman with this past budget who first voted no and then thought about if this doesn't pass, what happens? What happens to those $27 million that, yes, we are dependent of? Are we ready to say, let's not get this money? Let's continue to increase taxes at 18 20%? No, I wasn't ready. I'm that councilwoman who made the tough decision, switched to vote to yes, because I understood that our workers needed to get be paid, that contracts and services that were rendered needed to get paid. So I am that councilwoman that will continue to fight for the city of Patterson. You may not like always what I have to say, but we have to have some skin in the game. I am that councilwoman who will always lead with integrity, who will be honest, and as I said, you may not always like what I do or what I say, but I will tell you the truth. I am that councilwoman, Councilwoman Maritza Davila, who will continue to work not only with the Latino community, I am the councilwoman at large who has been working for over 25 years in an institution that has handled students from all over the county, from all walks of life and all ages, starting from grammar school to high school to college and senior citizens. We need to have someone to make sure that understands government. We just can't say it's time for new blood. We do need it because I think with everything in life, balance is always the best. Yes, we have individuals that are running that have had years of service, that have years of experience, and that's a good thing. That's why I'm saying I am your councilwoman that will be coming back on Tuesday, May 8th, vote Maritza Davila, re-elect Maritza Davila, your councilwoman at large, your councilwoman for all. Councilwoman 4B. Thank you, Ms. Davila. The next closing remarks will be done by Ms. Fatima Bell. Ms. Bell. Hello, everyone. Knowledge and experience. Those are the two words that everyone uses. But what do they really mean? Because you've experienced something, does that mean you did it right? Because you have knowledge of something, do that mean you make the best decisions? What we have to do is hold everyone accountable for the part that they play on this council seat. The at-large candidates have to be not just in the ward where they feel comfortable, they have to be in each ward. Everyone should know who their at-large council people are. We know our council men and women because they're our personal council men and women, but the at-large, why do, people not even know that there's an at-large candidate? Why, does people, why are people so confused about the definition of at-large and what do they do? Because it's not seen, it's not nothing that you know. Like it's not nothing that you can point out. A lot of people had no idea that we even had an at-large portion of, of the council. Me, myself, I never knew that either. The value of a person determines the decisions that they make in any position, but especially the, the position of counsel. We have to embrace new leaders, such as myself, because we all can't stay here forever. There has to be new ideas. The world is changing on a daily basis. Things are evolving. People who bring new ideas to the, to the table should always be necessary. People who have experience and have been sitting here a long time, when they have a new idea in front of them, they do what they've been doing, trying to include the new idea, but they never really just step outside of what they've been doing and just look at it for, for, for brand new. Experience. The needs of the city are right outside of our windows. This doesn't, we, I, can, I can Google a, a, a definition of a council person, but the needs are right outside of our windows. Who's in a part of the current administration that's, you know, in charge of the trash, the underserved population, the potholes, all of these experienced people here, and we can't even get a decent living. 
That's the smaller things before taxes and, and abatements and all of those cool words that we use. But what about the need that the smaller needs? We have nine people currently a part of the administration. Who's currently doing anything about our quality of life? Because it applies to me as well. I write a lot of things down because every day I educate myself and I find out new information. And I write tons of things and it's all over the place. I have a, a thousand papers because I have so many questions, but I'm also trying to have the perfect answer for the residents as well, which is tough because it's like, you know, how do you have a, a perfect answer for something that, you never, that you've never done before? No, council was not on the job training. No, it's not on the job training. But every day we should come in here learning something new. As your councilwoman, I will empower our communities providing quality leadership, which includes character and strategy while creating paths for future leaders to follow. I will be bold. I will always advocate for our quality of life and our safety. I will always work with integrity. That means having character and moral coverage. In any event that I have to make a decision, I will always choose the best for the city and its residents. Reliability is really about work ethics. I will go the extra mile to ensure that things are done properly while managing commitments, value and views, hearing the voice and respecting your time. Now, when you hear that, that sounds like, wow, that, that was something like good, that was perfect. I studied that. I made that so it could make sense to you guys so I can have the perfect example of what I will do. But in all honesty, I have to get here in these chambers and sit with these people who will be a part of my my, the, uh, a part of the, the team that I will be on for two years, four years, wherever, wherever we will be for two or four years, I have to work with these people and we have to come together to get one value and that's the city. I could come here with all of these personal agendas. I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that. I'm not gonna do any of those things because guess what? Four other people have to agree with me and if they don't, then none of those things will get done. Don't be led by all of these promises. We can't be led by all of these promises because they, they're really, most of them are unattainable because if those, if those were things that could be done, why haven't they been done all of this time? I've been in the city since I was, I was born here. I'm 33 years old, 18 years I've been really like paying attention to what's going on here, working and all of those, becoming a parent, being a part of the school system, raising a child. And I'm saying to myself, <laughs> everybody been coming and going. Who's the leader? Who has integrity? Who has character? Because if you Google most of the people, what you do to find out about people that you don't know, you're You'll be like, okay, well, yeah, that's not it. My name is Fatima Bell, and I'm 12B on the ballot. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ms. Bell. We will now have closing remarks by Mr. Mohammed Akaruzman. Mr. Akaruzman. Thank you, Council President. President. I would like to thank the host uh, and Madam um, Sonia um, Gordon for preparing for this uh, for preparing for this forum. I would also like to thank um, all of you guys that taking the time and be the part of the democratic processes. Um, I know we talked about knowledge and experience, but we also need a good heart because I served here four years and I remember there's a lot of backroom deals went in. You know, these people, if you don't have a heart, I understand, you will find your way. Education, yes, you need it. Experience, yes, you need it. But 100% you need a good heart because without good heart, I personally experienced a lot of the setbacks at that council. And I thought who I believed, you know, there were some of the, my colleagues were my sister. After the election, they've been bought by other people. So I seen that. And so I know they don't even know you anymore because they got the seat. So you need your heart to serve the community, to serve people, because you can't just come here and sometimes you make up stories and cry. That does not, you know, you have to believe in God. And I'm telling you, without God, you cannot serve people. And so when I was your second ward councilman, I always, always was responsible, available, and was able to actually make a real difference and impact it in other communities. It's, um, I organized one of the biggest rally, anti-tax rally in the history of Patterson. I created hot spot ordinances. Well, I sponsored, I would say I sponsored hotspot ordinances that reduced like crime 80%. I also put a lot of cameras on hotspot areas. I, in, you know, today I'm, as I'm sitting here, in my first 100 days, I promise to make the largest investment 
in, into the recreational program for our youth and make our streets safer. Expanding special police force assist to our regular police officers that has been hurt by our budget cuts and mismanagement. I bring the experience, knowledge, and the heart that is badly needed on the council and will always be available. If you, any time, even when I was a councilman, I served two in the morning. People called me, I, let, you know, I got up and I dress up and I went to, because this was my job. When I signed up, I know what I'm getting into. I cannot say, you know what, if um, I cannot come now, it's after 10 o'clock. Some people called me from the second ward, one in the morning. And these people, still this day, they care about me, they respond to me, and they keep telling me that, councilman, you're going to make it, because what happened to you, I don't think it was the right thing to, they did to you. So please, on May 8, count on me, count on my running mate, Pedro Rodriguez, who's running for mayor, uh, Mitch Santiago, and my name is Muhammad Akhtaru Zaman. I'm on ballot position number five, and remember, the best is yet to come. So thank you. I'm on 5B. Thank you, Mr. Akhtaru Zaman. I just would like to say that we have just heard from our first five candidates out of the 14. Mr. Bernard Jones, Mr. Aslan Gal Sr., Ms. Marissa Davila, Ms. Fatima Bell, and Mr. Muhammad Akaruzaman. Tomorrow, on Thursday, April the 26th, at 2 p.m., you will have Mr. Douglas Maven, Mr. Kenneth McDaniel, Mr. Casey Melvin, Ms. Lisa Mims, and Ms. Angela Muhammad. And then on Friday at 2 p.m., we'll have Mr. Flavio Rivera, Mr. Devon Roberts, Mr. Mitch, Juan Mitch Santiago, and Mr. Zelly Thomas. I just would like to say that your sample ballot will be mailed out by May 4th. Your polling location where you will vote will be printed on the front of the sample ballot. The second and third part series, as I said, will be on Thursday, April 26th, and Friday, April 27th. Just a reminder, the voters that on election day you do are able to vote for three candidates. If you have any questions regarding the municipality election, please contact our city clerk's office, Ms. Sonia Gordon at 973-321-1310. And I want to say once again to my five candidates here, I wish you well on May 8th, 2018, and best of luck to you all. Thank you. Thank you.